Good morning, sunshine. I'm Carrie Pena alongside Brandon Lee, and we want to thank you all so very much for being here. That's right. And today we're going to be talking about breaking the cycle of generational trauma. Hugely important topic, especially when we talk about substance use disorder, any kind of destructive behaviors. We always want to talk about uh, generational trauma. And with us today is a licensed independent substance abuse counselor, uh, Dina Sander with Maggie's Place. Dina, it's good to have you here today. Thank you both for having me here and giving me a platform like this to talk about substance abuse recovery and also to give Maggie's Place this platform to discuss this. Yeah, first tell us a little bit about Maggie's Place, the population you serve, the folks you, you, know, you serve within our community. Maggie's Place provides nurturing homes throughout our community for women that are pregnant um, and also after they have their children. We also provide that housing for them as well for the first year of their child's uh, infancy. And these are women who um, are experiencing homelessness and some of them also experiencing behavioral health challenges with substances. Yes. About 80% of our women have suffered some sort of abuse or trauma or victimization and about 70% report uh, substance use use or disorders. Um, as, and obviously as a therapist, I look at that as a, an attempt to mask those trauma symptoms um, in a way um, to help cope. Obviously it has horrible adverse consequences and, um, but it makes sense to me to cope with uh, generational trauma in that way. What are you doing to try to help, in large part you, you're dealing with women right now, but you've dedicated your life's work to this for 30 years. What do you do when you interface with these women who walk through the door with such deep scars, the trauma's so deep, where do you even begin? I think to normalize it, um, as a therapist, I've heard probably every day for 30 years, like you're never going to believe this or what I've done or what I have to share. I've never thought that it didn't make 100% sense if I was walking in their shoes, uh, their response, or uh, how they've coped. When you say normalize it, some of that is speaking it aloud, right? Just not being embarrassed by it, not feeling the shame that you're, you're saying it, and it's there. Now it's out there. Yes. And, and so then you're owning it. Yes. The deep connection we make when we verbalize it or we express it or we get it out of our body, out of our mind, out of our soul, then we can recognize it um, and heal and have that self-compassion. You, you know, I love that you talk about the fact that you, you don't you don't judge anyone who comes through the doors, you, you know, and that the substance abuse is just masking your own deeper. And, and that's why I'm so proud of Brandon for telling his story, because he has worked to normalize these things, because he did grow up in a wealthy community yeah. and he wanted to say, I too went through this. If someone is watching or listening today and feels that they're just so deep in it, they're not ready to speak it, what would you say to them? What is the first step that you might say, just try this? I think um, one thing is like the regulation. If there's, there's a lot of truth to like you can't think straight when you're under a lot of stress or anxiety or deep depression or substance use and there's a lot of things happening there. And so seeking ways to just at, the very beginning, regulate breath work, meditation, prayer, mindfulness, art that you mentioned, um, whatever your expression is, journaling. And some people, those things don't work for everyone. And so what is the way that you can help regulate a regulated body and mind are more um, prepared to deal with that generational trauma? And, and trauma adds on. It's building blocks of trauma that have to be unpacked. I also hear people in recovery like, thinking it's not going to happen fast enough. Like, why is this not happening or why am I having a lapse? And um, our trauma was built. Sometimes by the age of three, things are taken from us. The attachment trauma, yes. the early childhood attachment trauma, which is why it's so important to have Maggie's place. Because, you know, I will meet people who will sit there and go, oh my God, I had the best childhood. Like my parents were great. And I said, you know, that's all great and all, but you don't know what happened to you between the ages of zero and three. Right, and we talk about, and, and while sex abuse and child abuse and neglect, that are, those are traumatic life experiences, it's actually that early childhood trauma, the attachment trauma that can throw off the wiring of our brain. And when we're going back to talking about breaking generational trauma, that all begins, like I know that my parents did the best they could mm -hmm. with the tools and, 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 and the things that they had. They did the best they could. Their intentions were never to hurt me nor harm me. 
right? So you can have these families in these really wealthy neighborhoods, their intentions are to provide a good life for their children. Their intentions are never to hurt them or harm them. However, if those parents don't address the trauma that they experienced when they were children, they will unintentionally pass that trauma down to their children and they will hurt them. Absolutely. That's such a good point. I think I see that we, they don't know that it's even victimization. Correct. People I work with don't know there's trauma even in their adult life or in their um, early childhood development. And so if you can't see it because it's what you know, and if you know a certain particular type of parenting or if you know using substances as a way to cope, this is what you know. And so it's really reteaching ourselves 40 years of <laughs> so <laughs> learning true, and just really saying that's really not appropriate. And sometimes it comes with self-love and self-compassion and going back to those early childhood memories and rescuing that inner child and um, letting ourselves be a child because that was taken from us and through victimization and and expressing even the hard things. Yeah. Like I love triggers. I, I have clients be so fearful of a dream or a trigger, oh, but it's, it's unprocessed work. It Correct. tells you what we need to focus on. I love it. Dreams, yeah. you can go through the whole recovery process in a dream. Yeah. The relapse, the guilt, the shame, the, the gratitude when you wake up and it wasn't a relapse. You can go through the whole process and just helping them see that um, this trauma really needs to be healed. And it really starts with that self-compassion Dina, thank you so much thank for you. all the work you're doing. Thank Just as you we both. close things out, what would you want to say to people about, because you see a lot of tough stories, but you also see a lot of people who manage to turn their lives around, even against the odds. So if you could just leave the audience with a word maybe of inspiration. 30 years as a substance abuse counselor, I've never met stronger people in my entire life. And it's in my body of work, not necessarily anything else. And so I just feel so blessed and grateful to witness people change and transform their lives on a daily basis. So thank you both for the work that you do in this area as well. It's so powerful. Thank you. Thank thanks you. so much for being on the show. Thank and thanks you. to all of you for watching. Good morning, sunshine. Yeah. And since you're online watching right now, go ahead and hit that little bell notification symbol. Subscribe to the channel. We'll send you um, updates whenever we upload a new episode. Have a great day. Take care, everyone.